I'm Jane Greenwood and I'm the costume designer for Therese Racan. I felt that if I went back to Zola first and read what he had to say about all these characters and some of his um, descriptions of them, it would help me with the clothes. And so I did, yes, and it was very depressing. <laughs> I do as much um, in-depth research of the characters. I looked at a lot of photographs of, of the period and looked at how people behaved in their clothes. There's a good example of that when you see the people sitting around the table playing dominoes. And I think they all have a kind of character that is sort of help. It was helped for me by looking at the photographs of people and the way they sat in their clothes. I chose a very simple palette. People wore darker clothes really for every day and, and uh, not too, I didn't really want to use very much colour because society and a sort of group of people that, that were not sh showy in the way of their clothes. With Therese I went through her many changes really for the play and I kind of just worked through what would be ideal but of course when we got into really analyzing the piece, we realized it was going to be very difficult for her to change as it's a continuous with her not going off stage. And so we narrowed it down to three dresses. The first one, she stayed in most of the first act. Then she had a black dress for the funeral, which she didn't stay in for very long, actually. And then she had a, a sort of dull gray dress at the at the end, and I kind of kept sort of looking at rather sort of simple silhouettes, clothes from museum, photographs. I like to look at details very closely and the way clothes are made in different periods so that I can talk to the drapers about how they'll actually put them together. We looked at Sheila, Sheila for the sort of, again, the kind of raw intensity that he has in his paintings. I mean, I kept on refining and refining and refining to get the silhouette so that we didn't really have to use the hoop. I didn't want to give her a hoop, and yet in 68, there was a hoop with a lot of really stylish women. And in fact, the young lady who comes in at the beginning has one. Yet I kept finding examples of dresses that Obviously, women were not wearing a hoop, and we went with that. The fabrics I used were sort of cottons and linen and not, nothing too fancy. The men, with Camille, well, we started off with him in the country and sort of looking quite young with rather blue tr trousers and an odd jacket. and. Then we gave him a very kind of formal outfit for his wedding with the black coat and also the one that he had his painting. The casting was very interesting because we had a very, very tall, rather muscular Camille actually. And um, Laurent, not so tall, uh, but still handsome and masculine looking. The trick was to make Camille not look too robust and taller than everybody else. I have to confess, I did sort of put him on, in clothes that were a little, little kind of restricting. Two reasons, sort of to keep him looking a little awkward and um, sort of to in some ways suggest that sickly quality about him that his mother talks about so much. And again, looking at the um, Victorian photographs and the way people posed and the way they stood in the clothes. And I always show actors a, little, a lot of the people of the period and how they stand and how they sit. And I always try and get, you know, when we get to the point where we have photographs, I try very hard to get photographs to show them so that, you know, the, the men could see how they used their hands, how they held their hats, how they put their hats on. That, I think, is very helpful for them. People 
um, had all different kinds of, of, of headgear and in rather sort of ordinary circumstances. Those big top hats, they did wear them and they did keep them on and I think that was sort of interesting. I was also interested in the priests and the way they had their sashes on and how they wore them and I was very happy when the Pope came and I was able to see a lot of priests and what have you. With, uh, I'm always doing this, finding pictures in the New York Times and sticking them in as a little bit of extra research. What's interesting is that while you're in the costume shop with the clothes, they're yours. And then when the actors go on stage, they're theirs. And it's in a moment that transition happens. And uh, you can no longer agitate over how that bow will be or what have you. You just have to let go and they have to become familiar and take over. Hopefully it is all a happy marriage.